sir. Sir, your prescription will be ready in 10 minutes. Yoon, you must be good at math. Can you help me figure this out? Hey Harvey, did that frozen food order arrive this morning? I'm Adonis. That's Harvey. Oh, right. Sorry. You guys kind of all look alike. Emma, I just love your big hair. Nice to meet you both. I'm Lupe. I'm a senior consultant. And this is my colleague, Gary. Nice to meet you both. We are so eager to hear your ideas about this project, Lupe. So, where do we start? Lupe, before we get going, you better take some notes. We need a record of all decisions made, so we can follow up later. What's going on in the examples you just saw? In each situation, someone was made to feel uncomfortable. But the person who made them feel badly didn't seem to be aware of it. These kinds of interactions happen to people of color, women, people living with disabilities, and other marginalized groups all the time. They are called microaggressions, small acts that together over time can have a big effect on a person's feelings of belonging or self-worth. A common way to explain microaggressions is death by a thousand paper cuts. Each offense is so small and seemingly harmless, but together, they really hurt. So, what can you do if you are the victim of microaggressions? Well, you have some choices. First of all, realize that it isn't always up to you to educate other people. Sometimes, it's easier to just let it go. Actually, I'm pretty terrible at math. The calculator is in the drawer. Sometimes, it is worth dealing with this situation right away. Thanks, but you don't have to speak up. I might be blind, but I can hear just fine. If you deal with microaggressions in a respectful way, the other person might realize their mistake and apologize. Who looks alike? Can you explain what you mean? Sorry, that was rude. I guess I need to get better at names. Sometimes, especially if the person is saying or doing hurtful things often, you might need to plan to speak with them about your feelings. If the relationship matters to you, like with a friend or a coworker who you see every day, it might be worth trying to resolve it. Sometimes this can be hard. For example, if the person is your boss, there is an unequal power relationship. But if you can make the person aware of how their behavior makes you feel, they will probably be more careful in the future. At work, it is also possible to ask for help from a trusted manager or someone in human resources if you feel nervous speaking to the person directly. If it seems like the problem includes more than one person, you might suggest some diversity and inclusion training for the whole staff. Often, these problems can be improved when everyone has more awareness about them.